Rising from the backwaters of ancient Greece, the Kingdom of Macedon soon swelled to encompass much of the known world. Under the military reforms of Philip II, Macedon had conquered Greece, and under his son, Alexander the Great, Macedon had conquered the entire Persian Empire. However, with Alexander's death, many of his generals began to squabble amongst themselves, splitting the empire into multiple kingdoms. One of these new kingdoms was that of the Antigonids, who took up residence in the ancient land of Macedon. This is the history of the Antigonid Macedonian Kingdom. Now, the Antigonid dynasty was founded by Antigonus I and his son Demetrius. Now, Antigonus commanded huge respect in the Macedonian army, as he had been one of Alexander the Great's companions. He had also proven his mettle, losing an eye in one of Alexander the Great's battles. Now, Antigonus was what we call Diadochi, or the surviving generals of Alexander the Great. Carving up the empire between them, there were soon new empires ruled by these Diadochi. In Egypt, Ptolemy had proclaimed himself pharaoh. In Babylon, Seleucus had wrestled much of the eastern provinces and had even invaded India. In Greece, the treacherous Cassander had taken power, murdering any rivals that he could find to his throne. In Thrace, the slightly mad Lysimachus had also come to power, and he was slightly mad. Soon Antigus and Seleucus were locked in a bitter war. Ptolemy also found himself at war with Demetrius, meaning the Antigonists were fighting against both the Seleucids and the Ptolemies. As Antigonus was so strong, Ptolemy reached out to Cassander and Lysimachus to join them in an alliance with Seleucus against Antigonus. The resulting war of the Diadochi would see Antigonus killed, with Demetrius becoming leader of his army. Demetrius would wait for his time, and eventually he ousted Cassander from Greece, claiming mainland Greece as well as Macedon for the Antigonid dynasty. He also later conquered Cyprus from Ptolemy. Demetrius is where the Antigonid dynasty really took off, becoming a formidable power in the Aegean and Mediterranean. Indeed, his son, Antigonus II, further increased Antigonid rule, defeating a group of Galatians, or Celts, that had invaded his territory. Now, the Antigonid dynasty would continue to go strong until Philip V came to power. See, the problem was, Philip V came to the throne at a very young age, meaning that he needed a regent to basically handle running an entire kingdom. This regent was called Antigonus Dawson. Now, Antigonus seized the throne for himself and became known as Antigonus III. Under his rule, the Antigonid dynasty became a major player in mainland Greece, defeating the Spartans and establishing a Hellenic alliance, basically a collection of the Greek city-states in mainland Greece. Dawson later died in 221 BC, having restored the Antigonid dynasty to its former glory. Now, Philip V was of age to come to power, and he soon made a mark on history. Eager to expand Macedon's power even further, Philip V began to intervene in state affairs in mainland Greece, most noticeably in a battle against Rhodes. This did not go unnoticed by the new power of Rome in mainland Italy, who began to grow concerned at how much Macedon was flexing its muscles. Tensions between Philip V and Rome would continue to grow, to the point where Philip allied with Hannibal during his campaign in Italy. This did not entirely go in Philip's favour, losing the region of Epirus to Rome, and allowing Rome to gain a foothold in the Hellenic world. Eager to re-establish Macedon after this slightly humiliating defeat, Philip again began to flex his muscles, increasing the Antigonid presence in the Aegean. This greatly concerned the Greek city-states, who began to see Philip as quite an aggressive neighbour. They called upon Rome to ally with themselves in a joint campaign against Macedon in order to curb the Macedonians' ambition. Rome, fresh off its victories against Carthage, agreed to help the Greeks and began a campaign against Philip. Now, Philip fully expected to beat the Romans this time, having assembled a very large army to oppose the invasion. 
However, in the unexpected battle of Cynocephali, Philip was soundly defeated by the Romans, albeit somewhat by accident, as neither side had expected to have a battle that day. Antigonid power had been so diminished that Rome now claimed hegemony over the Greek states. However, the Greeks began to look at the Romans as less like allies and more like occupying foreigners, and one thing the Greeks don't like is their freedom being squashed. In a dramatic turn of events, Philip's son, Perseus, became a champion for Greek freedom and led a revolt against Rome. However, Perseus was unable to bring his full force to bear, and at the Battle of Pindar, he was soundly defeated by Rome, thus ending Antigonid rule in Macedon forever. The fall of the Antigonid Kingdom of Macedon would mark a change in power in the Mediterranean. Rome now had a springboard against the other Hellenic states, and soon they sprung into Anatolia against Pergamon, into Syria against the Seleucids, and finally into Egypt against the Ptolemies. Thanks for watching and listening to our video. If you like the channel, consider subscribing to Ancient History Guy. Or, if you really like the channel, head on over to our Patreon feed. There, for as little as $1 a month, you can gain access to exclusive documentaries, behind the scene footage, and videos before they're live on YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.